Within two minutes, basically, of the jolts hitting him, he stopped moving. The state of Tennessee executed Nicholas Sutton tonight by electrocution in Nashville. He was pronounced dead at 826. Witnesses say they were taken into the gallery at 812. The curtains were raised with Sutton already seated. When asked for last words, he gave a lengthy statement thanking his wife and friends. He said he was grateful for being a servant of God. The first jolt of electricity happened at 818. Witnesses say his body lifted in the chair and his hands balled up into fists. His body then relaxed before a second jolt of electricity. Again, he was pronounced dead at 826. The execution happened at the Riverbend Maximum Security Institution in Nashville, and that is where Jim Matheny spent most of the day and joins us now with the latest. Jim. Hey Beth, well right now we're just across the street from the prison where Nikki Sutton was put to death and I want to give you a recap of exactly how we got to this point. Sutton murdered four people on his way to death row. Three of those were in 1979, including his own grandmother. Now those killings sent him to prison for life. But then in 1985, Sutton murdered another inmate and a jury decided because of that murder, he should be sent to death row. Now my colleague John North John, you actually uh, witnessed the execution tonight. If you don't mind, just uh, take us through the events. Jim, the state has a very precise protocol they like to follow. They try to stick to it. There were about six of us who were led into the witness chamber for pa uh, pan panels of glass to look through. We sat in the dark for about 24 minutes, and then at 7.12, very promptly, the blinds were pulled up, and we were staring right at Nick Sutton, sitting facing us, strapped down in the electric chair. Um, it was very stark. The lights were bright. They asked him if he had any words. He said that um, he was grateful for the Lord and that he expected to be in his presence tonight after the execution. At 717, they hit him with first of two jolts of electricity, and in two minutes, I would say he was dead. He was formally pronounced dead at 726. So this is the second time you have witnessed an execution. You also witnessed Billy Ray Eirich's execution in August a couple years ago. But uh, in that case, that was a lethal injection. Tonight, Nick Sutton had chosen to die by the electric chair. Are you able to provide any kind of comparison between the two? Well, I don't want to be too gruesome, but they are very different. Uh, as I mentioned, um, Sutton was facing us directly, staring right at us. We were looking at him. He was looking at us. Uh, uh, Billy Eirich was strapped on a gurney, and he was actually facing away from us, staring at the ceiling. So we never made eye contact with him. Another difference is inmates uh, uh, have concerns about the method of lethal injection that the state uses, and so that's why they have picked electricity. But but it takes a lot longer actually for the inmate to die under lethal injection. There are three drugs that have to be administered. It takes a while. So you sit there and watch him snore, chest rise and fall, and then finally he becomes silent. So I mean, you're basically with the lethal injection, you're just watching someone waiting for them to stop breathing, waiting for a heartbeat. With this, um, I don't know, I, I, what's it sound like specifically? I mean, is there any way to describe what that sounds like? I guess what you what you listen for is when, when the electricity is plugged in, there's a wire on the floor and somebody uh, attaches it to the chair and that gives the chair electricity. You then listen for the hum, which tells you that the electricity has been engaged. You then hear it sort of pronounced a little like an elevator and you'll watch, you see the inmate sort of push up against the chair. That happens twice. And then he fell silent. We saw, we saw and heard nothing more from him. Well, listen, this is a difficult and also a very important assignment. And um, it's not a normal thing to go see someone die. And so I just want to thank you for your reporting and for being a witness, someone that's a credible source to be able to say that this happened the way the state says it happened. So. Well, I appreciate that. There is a function for witnesses to, to take part in something like this. It is something that's necessary. Look, again, thank you so much, John. And, you know, tonight there were some other folks out at the prison, uh, protesters gathered outside the fence. And, you know, there were a couple of dozen of them outside that prison, but um, all but one were here to oppose the death penalty. There was one person here to support the execution of Nikki Sutton, but clearly there are very different opinions in our society and out here at the prison on capital punishment and also within the relatives of Nikki Sutton's victims. Some of them wanted him executed, others did not.
relief to have it all done and not have to worry about, well, when's the next appeal? When am I going to get another piece of mail from the State Attorney General's office? Just done with it. My uncle's death and other deaths that were caused uh, were senseless acts of violence. And then it's a tragedy compounding a tragedy. And again tonight, Nikki Sutton is dead, killed in the electric chair. Official time of death for uh, that pronouncement was 8.26 Eastern Time, 7.26 here in Nashville. We'll send it back to you.